Hello guys, good morning, how are you? I hope you are okay, everything is good. And today we're gonna work on the global citizenship. The topic of today, remember that we were speaking about the Eastern Hemisphere, right? So today we're gonna talk about this, look. We're gonna talk about what is the human geography of the Eastern Hemisphere? Let's check it out, right? What is the human geography, the way they live, what they eat, what they play? So let's see what is the human geography of this place of the earth. It says something like this. What is the human geography of the Eastern Hemisphere? First activity for you is answer the following questions. Share your ideas with the class. You're going to send me the picture, right? I'm going to read these answers. We have three questions. The first one is, what is your favorite food? So what is your favorite food? I can say here that my favorite food will be like pizza, I don't know, pozole, I don't know, uh, what else? What else do I like? Hamburgers, burritos, right? So not, question number two, what languages do you speak? Well, I can say I can speak Spanish, I can speak English, and I can speak a little bit of French. Question number three, what does your home look like, right? My home is green, my house is red, my house is big my house is small my house is beautiful my house is really comfortable so what does your house look like right please write the answer to these three questions in the spaces here okay right in there and before we start i would like you to watch a video and check and compare right what is the way i live from the way the people in the eastern hemisphere live let's watch this video It's a nice song. Remember the Plaza Rio one? It's the same almost. Look how they live. What do you think? Look, it's really nice, right? Look at the field. Look, they have animals, right? Do you think they have cell phones? Hmm. Do they have internet? I think it's very different the way they live, right? Look at the beach. They are walking on the beach, selling their clothes, right? Look at the earring. They have an earring on the nose and it goes through the ear. Right? Look at this. Where do you think they are? They're watching a soccer game, right? Look at the girl. She's really young and she has a nose ring. Look how they dress. Look, the buildings. They're really beautiful, right? The buildings. Like the Taj Mahal, remember? The seven wonders of the world. Look at them, they're happy. It's good. You need to be happy every time. Every day. Look, they look. Where are they? BTS or something? Look, the boy is cutting the rice. Look at the food. Would you like to, to eat this food? Would you like to eat that one? Look, he has two pets. They're beautiful, right? Look at them. Look at their hair. It looks really weird, right? Like a tunnel in front. That's nice. Look at all the people. I'm cool. Happy to learn. There you go, guys. So we watch a little example on how they live in the Eastern Hemisphere, right? Let's continue here. And this is the second part of the activity today. Read the following text. I will read it for you. It says, human geography is the study of how people live. It looks at the ways people interact with each other and the earth. It looks at people's cultures. Culture describes the way a group of people lives. It can include their food, shelter, and clothing. It can also include their language, jobs, and religion. So what is the human geography? Is the study of how people live, right? The, the human geography estudia la forma en la que la gente vive en, pues, en el lugar donde están. The last activity says, look at the pictures from the Eastern Hemisphere, read the captions. The captions are these, like the titles, something. 
So look at this image number one. We have the Maasai tribe of Kenya, right? Look at the people from Kenya. Number two, what do you think this is? Well, this is a rice field in Thailand. So a rice field, what is rice? The arroz. So a rice field, look how they cut it, right? Like they cool it out of the water, the ground. I don't know, but it looks interesting. Number three, gondola boats in Italy. Look, Venice. That would be like very romantic, right? To go there and swim. Well, not swim, right? A gondola. Number four, food in Greece. Look at the food. Would you like to try this one? I think it looks really nice. Yeah, it's good. It's like a salad type of. And number five, a market in India. Look, what do you think these are? Species, right? They say like uh, canela or whatever they say, right? But this is like species and number six look they also play soccer a game in in swaziland right so they are playing soccer they are having fun right almost the same thing but different culture from us so this is the first page that you are going to answer today guys that is page 109 please do it and the next one i think we are not going to do this right don't do it and we're going to continue we're going to continue with the vocabulary section, right? We're going to learn some new words, some new phrases that perhaps you didn't know, right? So it's a something like this. Vocabulary. Listen to the words and definitions. Then listen and repeat with your best pronunciation. Let's first listen the vocabulary, the words. Pay attention. Vocabulary. Listen to the words and repeat with your best pronunciation. Fertile. Fertile. Your turn. Fertile. Good. Paddy fields. Paddy fields. Your turn. Paddy fields. Good. Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean Sea. You did it. Insulation. 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 Perfect. You got it. Isolated. 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 Yes. Forage. 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 Good. Sleds. Sleds, like Santa Claus. Sleds. Sleds, good. This is the sled. Huts. 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 There you go. You got it, you got it. You did a good job. Thank you. And now we're going to continue. Look at this song. We're going to continue with the description, the definition of the words. Listen. And which Vocabulary. Word? Listen to the words and definitions. Then, listen and repeat with your best pronunciation. Good. Fertile. Fertile. Land that can grow lots of crops. Okay, fertile. Una tierra fértil, donde pueden crecer muchas plantas. Paddy fields. Paddy fields. Flooded fields where rice is grown. Flooded fields, entonces campos inundados donde crece el arroz. Mediterranean Sea. A large sea near Greece and Italy. All right, so this is este es un mar grande, un grande que está cerca de Grecia e Italia. Insulation. Something used to keep the temperature of an object from getting too hot or cold. All right, insulation, that one is uh, isolated. Isolated. Far away from other people, buildings, etc. All right, isolated, aislado, like today we are isolated in our home. Forage. Aislado. To search for food. The forage, ir a buscar comida. I'm, I'm, I'm going on a forage, right? And then you bring food. Sleds. Vehicles designed to be pulled by animals over snow and ice. Okay, so the sleds, vehicles designed to be pulled, like Santa Claus, right? I was telling Huts. you. Small buildings made with simple materials. Grass, sticks, etc. So the huts are these, las cabañas, right? Uh, they are made with grass, sticks, etc. Palos, palmas, whatever, etc. Right? 
So this is the new vocabulary for today, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you don't have any new words. And if you have new words, please send me a text there in the classroom platform, right? So we are going to continue now with geography and culture in the Eastern Hemisphere. We're going to talk about that, the geography and the culture, what they like to do, what do they eat, what are their um, hobbies, their free time, right? And the geography, what do they have near their houses? Let's check this out. It says geography and culture in the Eastern Hemisphere. The activity is read and listen to the following text. I will play the audio, you listen the audio, you read and circle the new words that you don't understand. All right, pay attention to the audio. Geography and culture in the Eastern Hemisphere. Read and listen to the following text. Read and listen, circle the new words. Physical geography can influence culture. A culture describes how a group of people live. Let's look at some examples of how physical geography impacts culture in the Eastern Hemisphere. Let's look. Southeast Asian countries, such as Vietnam and Indonesia, are warm and get lots of rain. As a result, the area has a very fertile land. This allows people to grow rice in paddy fields. Rice is an important part of people's diets in the area. People make money from selling the rice to people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Even in Mexico. The Nenets live in the very northern part of Russia. It is very cold and this snowy. The Nenets use sleds to move around on the snow. A lot of reindeer live in the area. The Nenets depend on reindeer herds for food, clothing, and transportation. But climate change and other factors are threatening the Nenet way of life. Okay. Santorini is a Greek island in the Mediterranean Sea. The <laughs> island has no rivers and fresh water is hard to find. People used to collect rainwater in large tanks on their roofs. Many houses in Santorini are dug into the sides of the cliffs. The rock gives the houses insulation to keep them cool in the hot summer and warm in the winter. You got it. This is beautiful, right? The Mbuti live in the rainforests of the Congo. They are isolated from most of the outside world, so they forage for food in the rainforest instead of going to the store. They live in huts made from vines, leaves, and sticks in the rainforest. Okay, guys, so this is a very interesting story, right? Well, not story the way they tell it. Um, so here, before we continue, I have a little video for you. I want you to watch it and pay attention to it, right? Oops. It's not a video, I'm sorry. It was an exercise. Uh, categorize the example of how physical geography impacts culture in the Eastern Hemisphere according to what part of the world they belong to. Let's start. Two num tries. So we have here, people grow rice in paddy fields and export it to places all over the world. The Nanets live in the northern part of the country where it's very cold and snowy. Rice is an important part, right? So they are only giving us facts on each of the places. Let's go back. Yes, I don't want to do this. Let's go back here. And from here, do you have any new words, new phrases? Write them, send me a text in the classroom, right, platform, so we can clarify the question or the doubt. Let's review something about this. Um, remember, physical geography can influence the culture, right? So the geography and culture um, are go by hand, right? Se van, se van de la mano ahí. Eh, so we have here Southern Asian countries such as Vietnam and Indonesia. Dice aquí que son muy calientes, pero tienen mucha lluvia. Como resultado de toda esta lluvia en esos lugares de Vietnam e Indonesia, la tierra es muy fértil. Entonces ahí es donde hacen estos campos de arroz que están inundados. Si se fijan, miren, hay mucha agua. Las plantas parece que están flotando, right? So, there they grow rice. Y pues ya de ahí, de ese arroz que sacan, lo venden a todo el mundo. The Nenets. Let's go here. Nenets are these people. They live in the snow, right? So, they, uh, they use sleds. Remember what are sleds? You should know now. To move around, right? The sleds are like the cars in the city. So, they 
are moving and they are pulled by reindeers, right? Entonces son ahí por renos mo, eh, jalados estos, um, these sleds, like Santa Claus. Uh, the next ones are the Santorini. It's a Greek island in the Mediterranean Sea. So look at it. It is really beautiful. It says here that this island has no rivers. No tienen ríos ahí. No tienen de dónde sacar agua dulce, right? Entonces no tienen que tomar. ¿Cómo le hacen? Dice aquí que en el techo todas las casas tienen como un tambo grande donde cuando llueve se llena y pues esto les genera o les da el agua potable que necesitan para su vida. The Embuti, look at this. Look at the houses. They look nice, yes. Uh, they live in the rainforest. Ellos viven ahí en la selva todavía, right? They live like the cavemen, como los de antes. And they are isolated from most of the outside world. Entonces, ellos están este, aislados de todo el mundo, right? They forage. Eso quiere decir que ellos van y cazan, right? Su comida. They don't go to the store. They, they don't go to Walmart, right? They don't go to... Also, they live in huts. Remember, this is the huts, las cabañas, made from vines, leaves, and stick in the rainforest. So they live like a caveman. Guys, what do you think about this? This is really interesting, right? All the cultures, look what they do to survive. What about here? What do, the, what do we do to survive? Let's go now to the next activity, and that is on page 113. It says the instructions. Complete the graphic organizer to show how physical geography affects the culture of different people, right? So here, um, you need to read this and go to the reading to get the missing words, right? This is very easy. The warm and rainy climate creates what land? Creates, uh-huh, what? I won't get a lot of rain. They got fertile land, right? Fertile land. People farm rice in to eat and sell. In what? In paddy fields. Yes, the, uh, this allows people to grow rice in paddy fields, right? So I already answered number one. It is your turn to answer number two, three, and four, right? Nanets. So go to the Nanets information. They travel on. Ellos viajan sobre qué? We already say, right? Like Santa Claus. Mm, then, aha, uh -huh, live in the area. So the Nanets herd them for food, clothing, and transportation. Entonces, ¿qué animales son los que viven ahí? Y ya los Nanets los usan como comida, ropa, y medio de transporte. People of Santorini, what do they do? They are no what? So there's little fresh water. ¿Qué es lo que no tenían, recuerdan? No tienen qué. Así es que no tienen agua potable. People collect rainwater in rooftop what? ¿En dónde colectan esta agua? A houses are built into cliffs for. ¿Para qué se construyeron las, las, las casas en las colinas? Right? So you need to grab them here. And booty, they are aha, from the outside world. Están que? They are far, far away from the outside world. So they, aha, for food in the rainforest. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que hacen con la comida? Van y qué? Van y la buscan. Pero ¿cuál es la palabra en inglés? They built... Made from rainforest leaves, sticks, and vines. They build what? What are the houses called? Right? So, over here. Uh, page 113. This is it. This is going to be the activity on page 113 about the reading. Right? Answer it. If you have any questions, tell me and send me a text. I will, uh, I will help you. I'm sorry. I got cut. All right, guys. So... Now that you finish this activity, you're going to pass to physical and human geography by the numbers. By the numbers, remember, this activity is going to be math problems. Physical and human geography by the numbers. Let's go ahead and see what is it about. We have here the activity is on page 114, so I would like you to go there. It says physical and human geography by the numbers. Math connection, right? We're connecting social um, studies or global citizenship with mathematics. Let's read them and start. Read the facts about the physical and human geography of the Eastern Hemisphere. Then solve the word problems, right? So you need to read about the physical and human geography of the hemisphere. Let's read this. The Nile River is the longest river in the world. 
with a length of 6,852 kilometers. The Tigris River in Western Asia is 1,850 kilometers long. What is the difference in length between the two rivers, right? What is the difference? The Nile, 6,852, and the Tigris River, 1,850. So what is the difference? How big is the Nile River? More than the Tigris River, right? What is the difference? ¿Qué, tan, qué más largo es el río Nilo que el río Tigris? So put it here. How much? Number two, Europe is about 10.1 million square kilometers. Asia is about 44.5 million square kilometers. And Africa is about 30.3 square kilometers. How much larger is Asia than Europe and Africa combined? Right, so here you need to put how much larger is Asia? Remember, Asia is 44.5 million square kilometers. Africa and Europe, Europe is 10.1 and Africa 30.3. So how much larger is Asia than Europe and Africa combined? Right? ¿Qué más, ¿Cuánto más grande es Asia que Europa y África combinados? You have here the numbers, so do it. Number three. Asia has the largest population size of any continent, while Australia has the smallest. If there were exactly 4,406,273,622 people in Asia and 24,232,413 people in Australia, how many more people will Asia have compared to Australia, right? So how many more people does Asia have than Australia? ¿Cuánta gente hay más en Asia que en Australia? We have here Asia, 4 billion, Australia, 24 million. So how much, what is the difference, what, right? How much is, how much more people are in Asia than in Australia? Give me the answers. I know you can do it. And the last activity for today, it says, choose one of the word problems above. What steps did you use to solve the problems, right? So here you can explain me. How did you do the problem? How did you get to the answer? ¿Cómo respondieron ese problema? Quiero que me digan eso. ¿Cómo? Ah, es una suma, es una resta, dividí, eh, busqué en internet, cuánta gente había, right? So that is what I want you to tell me in these lines. En esas líneas, díganme eso, right? So, guys, this is going to be it for today. I really appreciate that you are very smart. And thank you. So, I hope to see you soon. Remember, take care. And I will see you on Friday, right? So, thank you, guys, and have a good day. Finish your homework. Do your work. Thank you. If you have any questions, any doubts, send me a text in the classroom. I, right? Bye-bye.